So the Curing Retinal Blindness Foundation is the only patient organization in the world for the very rare eye disease of, it's a CRB1 is the gene mutation and it's an inherited retinal disease. We actually, half our patients have LCA, Leber's congenital amaurosis, which is the early onset. And the other half have retinitis pigmentosa, which probably more people have heard about, which is a little bit later onset. Um, regardless of onset of our disease, by about 20s, early 30s, pretty much all of our patients are going to experience no vision at all. Um, we started in 2011. Uh, I always say we went from one Facebook post to the floor of the FDA in less than six years. That's the power of social media. That's the power of a group of moms and parents wanting answers. Uh, but it was also the blessing of gene therapy coming on the scene. Um, and I say we were on the floor of the FDA because we were there to testify on behalf of Lux, what is now Luxterna. Um, it doesn't treat our disease, but it does treat a sister gene of our disease. So our theory at CRB1.org was we are going to champion Luxterna because it's going to open the door for everybody else in the inherited retinal disease community, and it blew the roof off our community. It was really fantastic. So here's what's interesting in the way that this field has exploded. We started eight years ago. I was a third grade teacher and stay-at-home mom. I didn't know anything about this science. So I went out and built a very small scientific advisory board to see where we wanted to invest. And honestly, there was, there was still not enough people interested, so we just kept fundraising and building the bank for when somebody was, would come along and that, or that we would stumble upon at a conference. And we did. We ended up having some symposiums. We read some stuff going on in the Netherlands for gene therapy and then brought in some, even the folks that discovered the gene. I, mean, I got in touch with them to say, what is happening with this gene? So we gathered for a few years every year, we've gathered people from around the world to say, what's happening in the landscape of retinal research and where can CRB1 and CRB1.org have an impact. Just in the past year alone, people are now coming to us saying they want to they wanna dedicate one person at like uh, Columbia University, for example, in New York, wants to dedicate one person to CRB1 research there at the team. We just got another call that another organization wants to dedicate one of their scientists specifically to CRB1. Um, we have a natural history study. We're doing the registry thing a little bit differently because when we started looking at it years ago, it was expensive. Um, but we know that we need the, the registry and the natural history study, right? So we have a project at Columbia that will be a very small natu natural history study to understand more about this disease that nobody understands. Um, but we're also partnering with CORDS to have the very basic name, phone number, email address to know where all these people are. So we figure if we can find them all and give them not just the resources for fundraising for us and what research is coming, but also how to how to guide your blind child to thrive while awaiting these treatments, because that's the two parts of our mission, right? So now we've got that registry, the simple one going, the natural history study is gonna open with just a very small amount of people so that we can get a, a nice thorough amount of information in there. Um, we're looking at those two dedicated researchers on teams. There's a team in the Netherlands that should be opening their clinical trial for gene therapy for CRB1 in 2020. Not much of a coincidence there, right, 2020. Um, and then we are looking into CRISPR. And, and I honestly, I keep my eye on artificial intelligence, on, on the, the retinal implant and things like that so that, you know, it's a, it's a final stage option when all vision has declined and no, nothing can interrupt it, nothing can restore it, all options are off the table. There is the retinal implant that has come very far that um, they're basically replacing the retina with a little computer chip and that will send the messages to the brain. I mean, that kind of stuff is pretty incredible. Um, that could very well work for kids like mine.